All right, kiddos, welcome back. We're continuing our discussion about periodic properties, and we're going to spend time today talking about atomic radius, which I happen to think is probably the most important of all of the periodic properties. Let me give you a simple definition for atomic radius. We haven't talked about different types of bonding like metallic and covalent yet, so this definition to some people um, might not be the perfect definition, but for us it works quite well for our discussion related to atomic radius and periodic properties. So the definition we're going to use for atomic radius for right now is one half of the distance between adjacent nuclei of bonding atoms. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, oh, let me draw a simple picture here. Here's the nucleus, we'll say, of a hydrogen atom, and here is here are its electrons buzzing around in some type of uh, spherical shape. And here is another hydrogen atom that it's bonded to with its electrons buzzing around as well. Okay, so we have the nuclei of this hydrogen atom and this hydrogen atom. If I were to take the distance between those two nuclei, all right, and take half of that distance, that would be the atomic radius of a hydrogen atom. Okay, now, in, um, in our periodic table here that we're seeing below, this distance is going to be measured in picometers. So, let's see if we can see a couple of different trends as we go across a period and down a group to the atomic radius of these elements um, on the periodic table. Let's go ahead and pick period number three. All right, so we'll go from sodium to argon. So sodium's atomic radius is 186 picometers, magnesium 160, aluminum 143, silicon 118, and so on down to argon 98. Do you notice, I hope it's obvious, that when we move from left to right across the period, the atomic radius of an atom gets smaller. Now that's very, very difficult for some students to grasp a hold of. Let me show you why. When you look at the periodic table and we go from sodium, which has an atomic mass of 23, all the way across to argon, which has an atomic mass of almost 40, the atomic mass increases. A student would expect that as you go across a period, since atomic mass increases, you might expect that the atomic radius increases, when in fact it doesn't. The atomic mass actually decreases when you go across a period. Now, we're going to explain why in just a minute, but, but try to wrap your mind around that because it's confusing to many, many students. Now, what about when I go down a group? Let's go ahead and pick on the noble gases, group number 18. When I go down a group, what happens to the atomic radius of the elements? Well, helium has a atomic radius of 31 picometers, neon 71, argon 98, krypton 112, xenon 131, and radon 140. When I go down a group, obviously, the atomic radius increases. Now, kiddos usually don't have a hard time grasping that because when I go down a group for the noble gases, if I start with helium with an atomic mass of 4 and go down to xenon with an atomic mass of 131, obviously the mass increases, so you'd expect the radius to increase, and so you can keep that pretty well straight in your mind. So the point we're just trying to make right now is that when you go across a period, the atomic radius decreases. When I go down a group, the atomic radius increases. Now, how do we explain that? So, what we're going to do next. Explain why atomic radius decreases when you go across a period. So, let's try to figure out what's happening across a period. Don't you agree, when I go across a period, remember if we go from sodium to argon, when I go right across here, don't you agree that I'm going to be gaining electrons? Sodium has 11 electrons, argon has 18. No big deal there. I am gaining electrons. True story? All right, so let's write that down. We are gaining 
electrons across a period. Now, what doesn't happen when we go across a period? Yeah, that's sort of tough to understand. Aren't the electrons that are being gained from sodium to argon going to be in the third energy level? Right? Sodium ends with 3s1, and then we have 3s2, and then we have 3p1, 3p2, 3p4, 3p5, 3p, or all the way to 3p6 over here. Right? They're all being gained on the same energy level. So we're gaining electrons without gaining energy levels. And that is true whenever I go across any period. Let's say I'm going across, let's see, the fourth, let's go across the sixth period. So I go from this element all the way over here. Aren't I gaining electrons? No doubt about that. In fact, that would be the element cesium all the way across to the element radon. I'm obviously gaining lots and lots of electrons. However, aren't the electrons being gained here 6s1 and 6s2? Aren't these 5d1, 5d2 all the way to 5d10? In fact, we even gained some in the 4f way down here, and then we gained some in the 6p. The bottom line is the energy level is not increasing, so we're gaining electrons without gaining energy levels. Therefore, so this, these little three dots, that's the symbol for therefore, electrons that we are gaining are not shielded from an increasing nuclear charge. You see, as we're gaining electrons across any period, aren't we also gaining protons in the nucleus? And since we're not gaining energy levels, those protons, as they build up in the nucleus, can act to pull those electrons in more tightly. So this will pull electrons closer to the nucleus. So let me give you a couple of examples. Okay, let's go with sodium. It has 11 protons, 11 electrons, and don't you agree, a total of three uh, energy levels. So here's the sodium nucleus with 11 protons in the nucleus and it has three energy levels, okay? So we're gonna put the outermost electron way over there, and the third energy level, okay? Third energy level. Now, the last element in that period is argon with 18 electrons. So now we have 18 electrons and 18 protons. Now we've gone from 11 positives to 18 positives, and the radius is smaller for those electrons because we still have three energy levels, don't we? We have not gained energy levels, but we've gained protons in the nucleus. And so those causes that, that causes those electrons to be pulled in more tightly. The radius decreases when you go across a period for that reason. We call that an increasing effective nuclear charge. You are gaining electrons in the same energy level. At the same time, you're gaining more and more protons in the nucleus, which causes those electrons to be held more tightly. They're pulled in closer to the nucleus. Okay, so that is why atomic radius decreases when you go across a period. Now, what about when we go down a group? All right, so when we go down a group, obviously it says that the atomic radius generally increases. So we were picking on group 18, the noble gases earlier, and we went from helium all the way down to, well, here we have radon, okay, to radon and that atomic radius increases. Try to think of a reason as to why the atomic radius, when you go down a group, increases. I'll bet you can come up with this answer. 
Yeah, I think you've got it. When you go down a group, let's see, doesn't helium have one energy level, right? The first energy level. And then we have the next element in that group, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, which we go from two to three to four to five to six to seven energy levels. So here, when we go down a group, the energy level is increasing. Therefore, we will have an increase in the radius. The electrons get farther away. We're gaining energy levels. And every time you gain a principal energy level, you are farther away from the nucleus. Now something else happens. Also, um, the additional orbitals that we're adding as we go down a group between the nucleus and the outer electrons shield them so they shield those electrons from the effect of the nucleus Okay, so here, let me just give you a quick example. Here is helium. Helium has one energy level, doesn't it? Okay, well, what about when we go all the way down from helium down to radon? So we have one energy level, two, three, four, five, six. So then we have one, two, three. We get bigger and bigger and bigger and so on. Aren't these inner layers shielding these outer electrons? from the effect of the nucleus. In fact, not only are they shielding it, but aren't these inner layers repelling the outer layers away from each other? Because electrons carry negative charges, and each layer is negatively charged. So it's literally pushing them away from the nucleus. So not only are they getting bigger simply because we're gaining energy levels, but when you do that, the energy levels are pushing each other farther and farther away from the nucleus. Okay, so make sure you can explain why the atomic radius increases when you go down a group. It's a very, very important periodic property. So once again, let's go ahead and erase all this so it's not quite so confusing. When you go across a period, the radius generally decreases because you're gaining protons without gaining energy levels, and the effective nuclear charge increases. When you go down a group, you are gaining energy levels, and you are also gaining shielding. We actually call that the shielding effect, which causes the outer electrons to be pushed away from those inner electrons, and the radius increases. So, if I were to ask you, which of a pair of atoms has the greater radius solely based upon its position on the periodic table, you should be able to tell me. So, if I picked this element here, and compared it to this element here. You should say that this element has the greater radius because it has more energy levels and more shielding. If I were to choose uh, this element compared to this element, I said which one would have the greater radius? You would say this element has the greater radius because it has a lower effective nuclear charge. It has fewer protons pulling on electrons that are located in the same energy level. And we'll have practice problems like that. Okay? All right. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.